but now. And uh, this phrase clearly indicates that God is now doing something uh, in this present age that is different from what he did in time past. And the fact that the Bible was given by progressive revelation, now God didn't reveal everything at once, he revealed it progressively, that proves that dispensationalism is the right way to study the Bible. You see, the Bible is a complete revelation. There's no more revelation to be given, but it came gradually over time. It, it came progressively. Uh, Moses said, the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things which be revealed belong unto us. That's Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Moses knew there were some things God hadn't revealed at that point. Well, there are some of those things he has now. I don't think the Bible is everything God knows, but it's everything that we need to know, that he wants us to know, and it's everything he's going to reveal. As God revealed more truth, it brought about clear changes in his dealings with man. And, of course, there is moral truth that never changes. It runs like a straight line through the pages of the Bible. God never changes in his principles. He never changes in his person. But he certainly does change in how he deals with man. The Bible is very clear on this. And as we often say, all the Bible is for us. But it's not all written to us. and It's not all written about us. And so in 2 Timothy 3.16 where Paul said all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, if we're going to get the most profit out of it, we're going to have to approach it God's way and study it His way. And before he said what he did in 2 Timothy 3.16, he said in chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's all the word of truth. Rightly dividing is seeing the divisions that God put in the word of truth. Uh, what was the word of truth to Israel under the law may not be the word of truth to the body of Christ under grace. And so there are differences that we need to acknowledge and consistently maintain in our, in our Bible study. Now, in our first message, we considered the first but now that we come across in Paul's epistles, and that's Romans 3.21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, uh, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And what a wonderful verse that is. And we saw how that in time past, a person under the law demonstrated their faith by seeking to do the works of the law. It was faith, but it was God told them, you need to keep this covenant. You need to do these commandments. And so faith under the law would seek to do that. And where they failed, there was a sacrifice they could bring to cover uh, their sin. But a person under the law couldn't be righteous unless by faith he sought to live by the law. But now, but now that the righteousness of God without the law has been manifested, and it's manifested through Paul's gospel, he said in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. He said, from faith to faith, from God's faith to our faith, the just shall live by faith. Uh, the, the, the righteousness without the law, in other words, a gift of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ that's imputed to us the moment we believe the gospel, that's been manifested. Well, now that that's been manifested, we demonstrate faith by not trying to be made righteous by the works of the law, but by simply resting in the righteousness of Christ. And so we emphasize that in our last message. And, you know, we're not going to consider every but now that we find in Paul's epistles, because there's a number of them. But today, I want to look at several uh, passages in which he uses this phrase in uh, relation to the church, which is the body of Christ. So Romans 16, let's look at the end of the epistle to the Romans. And he says, as he concludes in verse 25, and this is really setting the stage for the next main doctrinal book to come, which is Ephesians. Romans is a doctrinal book, foundational book, doctrine concerning salvation. Ephesians is a doctrinal book all about the body of Christ. And so what he says here kind of sets the stage for that great book of Ephesians. Now to him, 
and that's the Lord, of course, that is of power to establish you. And so in Christ, we who believe, we need to be established in the faith, strengthened, settled, establish you according, how? To my gospel. And that, that's clearly revealed in the book of Romans. In Romans 2, verse 16, he, he, he referred to my gospel. But in 2 Timothy 2, 8, he refers to my gospel. How could Paul say my gospel? He could say that because it was given to him by revelation of Jesus Christ. He didn't receive it of man. It wasn't taught him by Peter, James, or John. It was given to him by revelation of Jesus Christ. He certified us about that in Galatians 1, verse 11 and 12. So he said, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Now, God will have all men to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. The work of the ministry is about seeing souls saved, and then once they get saved, seeing them edified in what it means to be in the body of Christ. That's the main thing. Uh, God will have all men to be saved, and they get saved by believing Paul's gospel, to come to the knowledge of the truth, the truth of the body of Christ, what it means to be in the body of Christ. So if we're going to be established today, it's going to be by Paul's gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. But now, but now, in this present age, through Paul's ministry, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets. Now, why does he bring that up? Because when you, when you look at what was revealed to Paul, and then you go back and search the prophets, you find out, sure enough, it was hid from the prophets. You learn by comparison and contrast. I, I, need to, I need to study the whole Bible. And by the way, there's truth in all the Bible that I need today. But when I look at some things in the prophets and see that Paul was given new revelation not found in the prophets, it, it, it shows me that this is new and distinct. And it's very important uh, to, to have, to, to study the whole Bible. Paul is the spokesman for the body of Christ in this age of grace, but we still need all the Bible, right? Paul himself taught us that in a number of passages. So he said, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the command of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise. And by the way, let me just say this. Paul mentions... Uh, I believe it's in 2 Thessalonians for an example where he talks about obeying the gospel. There's only one way you can obey the gospel today, and that's believe it. It's the obedience of faith. If you try to work for salvation, you're not obeying the gospel, the grace of God. The only way you can obey the gospel, the grace of God, is to believe it and quit trying to work to earn it and trust in the finished work of Christ. He said, to God only wise... Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. You say, what's the big deal about all this? Because it has a great impact on our doctrinal understanding. It, it ought to have a great impact on our practical walk when you see these things. You realize how many groups there are that are messed up today in the religious world because they think they're supposed to follow Acts 2? That's not our pattern. I don't know any group that consistently follows it. The charismatics, they like that tongues, but they don't, they don't want to give up their silver and gold. <laughs> they all gave, they gave away everything in Acts 2, didn't they? I don't see anybody doing that. Church of Christ, they love repent and be baptized for the mission of sins, but they, they're not about to speak in tongues. See, none of them take the whole thing. It's not our pattern. That's the point. But look at Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We were in darkness. We were so far off. We were without hope. Now we have a blessed hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I was in darkness. Now I'm in light. I ought to walk as a child of light. What an impact knowing this truth ought to have on my daily walk. And if we don't know what God is doing now, in this present age, our ministry will not be approved at the judgment seat of Christ. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you don't know but now, you're not rightly dividing. When you see the but now, 
then you know how to serve God acceptably in this age of grace and be eternally rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ.